In this technical analysis video, I will be going over the trade setups of Bitcoin, XRP, Cardano, and explaining why I am bearish looking for lower on all of them because of Ethereum. So I hope that you really enjoy this video. It brings some perspective of the lower prices to come in terms of my targets, and you understand the reasons behind these trade setups. So yeah, let's get straight into what we're here for, starting off with Bitcoin, then we'll move over onto those alts. So yeah, really simply, Bitcoin is still in its downtrend from the highs that we put in at $64,000, making the overall high, low, retest of that high, slight lower high, if you remember, with bearish divergences. And since then, we have had just very bearish market structure, making still continuously lower lows and lower highs, with the most recent lower low coming in off of 55600 And then the last lower high last night, of course, at 58500 where was that lower high put in? It was off of the CC from low to high, unable to break through that zone. So for me, there's a few important bits of information and data that we have to just acknowledge right now as facts. That is, we are downtrending. We are in a local downtrend. We are building lower lows and lower highs. On top of that, We've seen this pattern many times over the past few months, and it's once again just longs going crazy. So you can just see here on the daily perspective, 30 minute chart, looking at the order flow. Let me just see this together. Look at this, the delta and the volume. That's what I want you to pay attention to. And the open interest here too. So what we're looking at here is a massive open interest increase several times over all on new long trades. So here we see 4.9 million new longs, 9.2 million new longs. That's a decrease in open interest, followed by another 20 million new longs, 2.1, 7.6 million, 7.5 million. And it's the same story repeating. For me, this is bearish. I am looking for lower prices next. You know, for me, it's, it's a simple case. We are downtrending we are seeing weakness and with this many aggressive longs i just have to play the game of probabilities and i feel that i have really emphasized this greatly over the past few months on this channel the importance of the order flow and again there is no 100 percent guarantee but there is high probabilities and we're talking about odds and when we see the downtrend the weakness that we're seeing the loss of support the flips into resistance with this many longs opening it opens that long squeeze scenario where we just keep on dropping in price these longs that get aggressive get squeezed they're forced to close or liquidated and we continue to drop that doesn't mean that we're bearish for $1,000 Bitcoin, but it does mean that locally we have to trade off of this order flow and look for lower prices. Of course, the next big targets are the daily levels. If we zoom out a little bit here to the four hour chart, I would be expecting new lows to come here from the low of the 4th of September. So new monthly lows and our next bigger targets are sat between $54,000, dollars I say once again, that's where we're looking for the harmonic pattern, right? So this is a key zone of support. Uh, which if lost, you know, that's when we start to look for that $47,000. One thing that I, you know, have to emphasize is, you know, at these levels, this is where I will look for long trades. And there's always some people that confused, get confused saying, well, Daniel, you're saying Bitcoin can go to $47,000. So why are you going to take a long trade at $54,000? That doesn't make any sense. Well, for me, you have to understand, yes, I do feel we can go $47,000, but that could take another few months. And in the meantime, I'm going to be looking for trades within this internal range. So yeah, I am going to be looking for longs at $54,000, just as I would look for shorts at $61,000, because those for me are important levels within the range. And just because I could have lower targets or higher targets doesn't mean that in the meantime, on the interim, I'm not going to be looking for those quick day trades. Okay, so that does mean I could only take one trade a day, one trade every few days. But for me, waiting for those big important levels, monitoring the order flow, updating the probabilities is just key when it comes to making successful trades. And while, you know, that patience, that's the key takeaway today, patience of waiting for lower on Bitcoin, there are some trade setups to be have on altcoins where you can be a little bit more aggressive. For example, yesterday we done a live trading stream for Power Hour and I actually took two trades during that stream on altcoins. 
So, you know, there is that time to be aggressive. And that's why I would like to talk a little bit first about Ethereum and then more on XRP on Cardano for you both, uh, for both of those altcoins. So starting off with Ethereum, uh, my bias is the same as it has been over the past year. And for me, Ethereum is a very bearish looking asset. This for me is very weak. And what I want you to remember here is this has been my analysis and bias for over a year on Ethereum, that this is just a weak bearish asset. So that doesn't mean that I would enter short trades now on Ethereum, but it does mean I'm just following the bias and trend that I've had for, the, for over a year now. And that is extreme weakness on Ethereum. It's a very weak looking asset doesn't look interesting at all. I personally am not taking Ethereum trades because for me, this is just a not a fun or exciting looking chart where there are lots of good trade setups. And you might get one or two a week, but I feel there's more opportunity in other roles. So general overview for me is Ethereum absolutely more bearishly biased. Let's take a look at then Cardano first, and then we'll do XRP. Cardano is an interesting one because I see a lot of people more and more and more every day get very bearish on Cardano. And do I think they're incorrect? Not really, because I mean, just take a look at this chart. It does look pretty dead and pretty awful. But that does bring up the best opportunities. So as more and more people are turning bearish, thinking it's dead, getting out of Cardano, you do open up that opportunity of a nice bounce. And what I actually recognize on Cardano is we have this nice monthly level below us, but there is some confluence. And I'm looking at the previous range here, in the previous range, you can see the previous range point of control. Even if we bring this back up to uh, May 2022, you can see this point of control still coming in, not that monthly. So we actually have a really nice support zone for Cardano. Again, this might take a little bit of time, but the patience uh, is required, in my opinion. As we come down to that monthly value area low point of control of the previous range, that is offering us some very good confluence on where we would start to get interested in longs. So it's fairly close by, it's taken its time, but we are finally coming down to the monthly and previous range point of control and value area low, which is for me a critical support level. So get make sure you've set your alerts. To do that, right click on the trading view chart, add the alert, set your alerts on that point of control monthly level on Cardano, because that is gonna be key support where I will be absolutely interested for that next long trade. Let me just hide myself a second so you can be aware of that monthly. Add myself back on and let's move over to XRP. Another asset which has its bad rep at times, and I myself will also give a little bit of XRP bad rep. Why? Because I feel this is an asset that people have absolutely married, much like Cardano. It's one of these trends, right? People marry the asset, they become obsessed with the asset, and you know, you just need to, it doesn't look quite as bad as Cardano, but nevertheless, right, we're still down from all-time highs, you know, 70%, you know, it's not great. I do think there are better assets to be involved in, but nevertheless, there's still opportunity. My personal opinions aside, there is opportunity and trades to be had on XRP. If you actually refer back to around just over a month ago, these were two trade setups that I actually gave during a live stream to the champion members. And it was when we had this a ascending triangle, we had the long fake out, which was, of course, a long trade off the fake out of the triangle, ending in a short trade off of the top fake out. We were looking for the move down to fake out the lows, the move back up to fake out the highs, long off of the fake out of the lows, short off the fake out of the highs. I actually traded extremely technically well, uh, giving two trades and two wins. So, you know, although I have my own personal opinions on the XRP in terms of the fundamentals and the, the shield amount of times this asset is shielded, the, the technicals, to be fair, are tradable. So in terms of what we can be looking for next, in terms of what I feel is a very nice trade setup, I will remove this analysis as it is actually played out now. So let's just clear up that section of the chart a little bit. And in terms of what I'll be looking at next, there's a few ways that I will start to uh, view this in terms of higher term time frame analysis. What you can see is we have these major point of controls sat on the weekly. So this weekly is, well, it's a weekly itself. And we have to then start to try and find some confluence. So locally on the uptrend locally, we do not have that confluence, right? Because that's um, you know, already lost, let's say. Above us, we can see, though, we have a resistance. So much like this support level of the weekly sits on bigger range point of controls, this weekly above us now sits on the uptrend resistance point of control. 
We actually have a little bit of a lower term time frame trade setup, much like when we were trading here, the long into the short, we can look for something very similar, but we can look for this short into the long or vice versa, long into the short. Again, I'm not to particularly bothered whether we drop first and look for the long or we rise first and look for the short. Again, this is an asset to trade. I'm not looking for bag holding assets. I'm not looking for long term potential here. I'm looking for a quick in and out. This could be over the course of the next few weeks. So do you feel the weekly is our more aggressive long trades where I I'm not overly keen because of the market structure here. Again, if you struggle to understand what I mean by the market structure here, get yourself over to Chart Champions right now. Listen to the course that we've made, and I will teach you everything that you need to know about taking that trade setup. Because for me, this is a negative point when it comes to confluence, when I look at that type of market structure. But nevertheless, point of control on the weekly, it's a half trade setup if we look for the SFP of yesterday's low. A very aggressive lower term time frame trade entry, in my opinion, that would be bigger support coming down at the monthly taking out, okay, July's low towards those value area lows. That for me would be a bigger level of support. The weekly is the more aggressive level. In terms of the resistance, yeah, that's clear as day. Looking to hold those lower highs onto the weekly point of control. If we do get the breakout, well, XRP is an asset that if and when this breaks out, of course, we can get massive pumps to the upside above a dollar. But for the time being, let's not get that excited. Let's not, you know, go for the moon. We got a local trade set up. We know where the next long and short trade opportunities are. Requires once again, a little bit of patience, alert set, trade the reaction when it comes. So yeah, overview, I do feel XRP and Cardano can drop more as well as Ethereum, right? But those drops, the same as Bitcoin, these drops ultimately are for long trade opportunities. And I would always view that as drops are where you look for longs, just as rises are you where you look for short trades. And I actually want to end with a little bit of a positive note here about the importance, you could say the importance of patience and the importance of doing good things. And this was actually something that I look back on and... Wow, it brings me so much joy and love. And I wanted to just dedicate a little bit of a segment here at the end of the video to talk about this. And that was uh, back in January 2022. So we're talking nearly, what, two, two, three years ago now, nearly. So look at this. This was a time where I just, out of the kindness of my heart, went to Colombia and we joined a charity event. And, you know, these kids, you can see from the picture, right? they're, they're, they're living in, you know, wouldn't even like to say it's a shelter. Some of them just not even having a roof over their head. They're awful, really, really, really awful living conditions. What I personally felt was amazing by this, by the way, is that all these kids, massive smiles on their face, completely happy. They they have no understanding of like, the poverty that they're living in. It's, it is incredible to see how positive and happy they were. That genuinely brought a smile to my face. But yeah, we obviously went there, done some activities with them and just gave them a good time, you know, donated some things and just tried our best to help out and in the best you can in that type of situation so it was a very positive event and obviously going there was you know i was trying to do good things but when i look back on this in hindsight now this is actually where i went on during this event like randomly met a really nice woman and then she went on to become my girlfriend to become my fiance to become you know a integral part of my life and don't you think that's just really really crazy you see how it works you give and then you receive in ways that you would have never imagined and i think that is just a wonderful message to just show you like that, that kind of just blew my mind and made me so happy you go to be a charity be it whatever it is but doing good things you do good things you do it in a positive and selfless manner you know you're not doing something for expecting something in return but you genuinely are just doing your best to help out and then you be will reciprocate ways in ways that you never even imagine gracias adios um you know there's always someone looking down and you could call it karma you could call it whatever you want to it doesn't really matter but i do feel that that is absolutely true you go out your way you do good things and you receive ways and you would never have imagined and that for me was a a really good positive vibe to just show you um, yeah, went to this, went to, went to Columbia, ended up meeting a person there. You know, we spoke more and more and more. And, you know, now she's a, a massive part of my life, of course, living together, looking for just 
I, I think that was amazing. And, and shout out to Isabella. <laughs> She'll probably be watching this video too. Love you so much. And um, well, she's just outside. So I'll go see her in a minute, give her a big kiss. But yeah, I wanted to just bring your attention to that because I thought that was a wonderful little story and a nice little message to just say, do good things and good things will come back to you. So yeah, I hope I'm also doing good things, helping you out with the trade setups, explaining what I'm looking at next, giving you understanding of this order flow. You know, for me, Chart Champions, I believe that this is a really, really, really beneficial platform place where you can educate yourself about trading, join a friendly and motivated community that pushes people up in a professional and friendly way, right? We all want everybody to succeed, to do well, to have just a higher level of understanding, not just about charts, but also the world, right? So um, yeah, hope you've enjoyed. I continue to do my goal and what I feel my mission is, and that is to educate you. I hope that I'm doing it well. And, you know, from me, I can just say, I will always give you my best. If you want to see more, chartchampions.com. Thank you ever so much. Hope you've enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Goodbye.